In this video, we're going to talk about the trapezoidal rule formula. So if you've already watched the videos on integration, how to find the antiderivative and also how to find the definite integral, then you know that the definite integral is going to give us the exact area under a curve. Now there are situations where you're not going to have either the antiderivative or you're going to have data values that don't necessarily have a function assigned. In other words, if we don't have an equation that we can go ahead and find a definite integral for, then how do we go about figuring out the area under the curve? So the trapezoidal rule is going to allow us to do that. Here's an example. A researcher is monitoring the flow rate of a small river during a day. Table 11.1 gives a sample of the data. Notice the data is collected at time zero and then every two hours. So the researcher wishes to estimate the total volume of water that flowed during this time. How are we going to do this? Basically, if you look on your right hand side, you have this scatter plot. You notice that at time zero, you have 12 as your flow rate in thousands of cubic meters per hour. Then after the second hour, you have 17. After the fourth hour, 18. Six hour, 16. And on the eighth hour or eight hours later from when you started, then the flow rate is 15,000 cubic meters per hour. So if I were to connect all of these points with a smooth curve, the question would be, what is the area under this curve? Okay, so to find the total area under this curve previously, what we have done is written a definite integral where we have our lower bound, which in this case would be zero, and our upper bound would be eight, and we would have an equation that would represent this function. Right now, we don't have that equation, and so we can't do that. So one of the things that we're going to do instead is that we are going to try to create trapezoids. I can go ahead and create a trapezoid going straight down and I'm going to use basically my X axis as the height of the trapezoid. So this would be the height of the trapezoid. The height here is going to be two. The height of each trapezoid actually is going to be two. And what I'm going to do is connect these with a straight line. And that is going to give me a trapezoid. A trapezoid, in case you have forgotten, is a quadrilateral that has one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. And then of course, right here, perpendicular to those bases is gonna be my height. So that height right here is two, and these are my two parallel bases. The area of a trapezoid is equal to one half the height times the sum of the two bases. So one of the things that I can do right now is that I can go ahead and connect all of these dots with a straight line, and then I am going to be able to use trapezoids to be able to figure out the area of each trapezoid underneath the curve, add it together, and that's gonna give me an estimate. One of the things that I want you to notice is that in creating these straight lines, notice there exists a bit of a gap between the curve that I drew and that straight line. And so those little gaps is the reason why this is just an approximation. It is not the exact area under the curve because there's a little bit of area below the curve in between the straight line and the curve. And so a lot of these questions on the IB exam, they're going to ask you to find percentage error to figure out what is the margin of error, okay? How off are we in our estimate or how close, how good is our approximation? So in this case, here is a better picture of what these trapezoids look like. And like I said, you probably are used to seeing trapezoids drawn this way instead. And here are my parallel bases. You can call either one base one, base two. And then of course, my height is always perpendicular to my base. So in this case, we are kind of rotating these trapezoids and notice here I have my height, which is going to be two, and then you have your two bases. So what I can do 
is find the area of each one of these trapezoids. So that's what I'm going to do right now. For trapezoid A1, the area is going to be 1 half the height, then base 1 plus base 2. Base 1 is at 12. Base 2 is at 17. So then I'm going to go ahead and figure out that answer. I'm going to set up the problems first, and then I'm just going to go ahead and jump into the calculator to get all these values. So then I'm going to go ahead and do this for the second trapezoid, which is also going to be 1 half times 2. And then the bases for the second one are going to be at 17 and at 18. So 17 plus 18. Then a 3 is going to be 1 half times 2. And I'm going to do the same thing for a 3. This one right here is going to be 18. This other base right here is going to be at 16. So 18 plus 16. And then I'm going to do the final one, which is going to be 1 half times 2. And then for a 4, I am at 16 and 15. So 16 plus 15, those are going to be my bases. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my calculator. Go ahead and grab yours. And I'm going to put this into the calculator to figure out these values. Okay, so I went ahead and I put these all into my calculator and I got the area for each one of the individual trapezoids. And now I'm going to go ahead and add up all four areas, all four areas of these four trapezoids together. And that's going to give me 129. So what this means is that we have estimated that 129,000 cubic meters of water flowed in this river during this eight hour period of time. And remember, this is an estimate. It is an approximation. We don't know exactly how much was flowing because we only did this every two hours. So this is the best answer that we have. So hopefully you understand the concept of trying to estimate the area under the curve by using trapezoids and here is where the trapezoidal rule formula comes into play. If I take a look at exactly the same data that I was given, notice if I go back to what we did when we found the trapezoids, in each one of these calculations, I have one half times two, one half times two, one half times two, one half times two, and that is because the area of a trapezoid is one half times the height. So if you look at the trapezoidal rule formula, you're going to see that I have one half times the height. Basically, we have factored that out. The other thing that I want to point out is that if you notice, when I start to add the bases, this right here, this base that I have in red between A1 and A2, is going to be repeated two times. That is because it is a shared base for both A1, that first trapezoid, and A2, that second trapezoid. So notice the 17 is there two times. Same thing for the 18. The 18 is being shared between these two trapezoids. So notice the 18 is there two times. And likewise, the 16 is shared by trapezoid number three and trapezoid number four. So notice that you have that there twice as well. The only ones that you see there only one time are the 12, which is your initial base right here in blue, and then the 15, which is your final base at the end. So when you look at the trapezoidal rule formula, notice that what you're doing is adding that initial base plus the last base, and then you're going to have plus two times, and these are going to be your inner bases. So the actual trapezoidal rule looks a little bit intimidating because it's long, but all you are doing is finding the area of those trapezoids and adding it together. It just looks different because algebraically we factored out one half times the height and then we went ahead and realized every single inner base is going to occur there twice, but then the initial base and the last base are only going to be there one time. So I'm going to go ahead and find the same answer for the same problem, but this time I'm going to apply the trapezoidal rule instead of finding the individual trapezoids. So here's the data again. The height, okay, the height, I can tell it's going to be 2 because notice that on my x-axis here I'm going in intervals of 2. So to figure this out, okay, I am basically want to find the interval goes from 0 to 8 of y dx. And again, we don't know what this function is. So this is going to be approximately equal to 1 half the height, which we said is 2, times the first base, which is 12, plus the last base, which is 15, plus 
2 times the inner bases, which are these right here. 17 plus 18 plus 16. Go ahead and put this in your calculator. If you're using a graphing calculator, instead of the brackets, go ahead and just put an extra parentheses. Sometimes it'll give you an error message if you use the bracket. So we're going to put 0.5 times 2 times open parentheses, open parentheses, 12 plus 15, close parentheses, plus 2 times open parentheses, 17 plus 18 plus 16, and then close parentheses two times. And you're going to get the same exact answer that we got, which was 129. And again, because the units in this particular problem are in thousands of cubic meters, then that's exactly how you're going to write your answer. This really means 129,000 cubic meters meters of water flowed in the river. I hope you found this video helpful. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more help with math so that you can say, yes, I can do math with confidence. Until next time, thanks for watching.